Hey guys and guys, welcome back to some Summer Night 6. Um, where we left off, we saved Erst. Um, and now we're just going to go around talking to a couple people to uh, move on with the story. They're arm wrestling over there. More idealistic. That was kind of mean. Gian putting in his two cents. Gigantic cocoon. So a strange cocoon has appeared. Look at that thing. It's glowing and everything. It's freaky looking. Kind of creepy crawly is a There's something, there's a humanoid person, there's a person growing in there?
stop. Please stop. Somebody's crying. It seems to be coming from inside the cocoon. Stop, mother. <clears throat> that voice. Wait, is that... Anisha. Where are you going? It has to be. Anisha is inside this thing. What? What the heck is she doing inside a cocoon? Mother, don't leave me behind. Stop. Don't lock me up. She seems to be in great pain. I believe she is dreaming. Dreaming? Being tormented by a sad dream, a scary dream, a nightmare that will not end. The strings are using her memories to try to control her in the same way they controlled me. And me as well. I understand what she's going through. It was terrible. But why isn't Anisha being controlled then? Because of her Aerozaid powers. Her mother is an ancient fairy. That feature of her biology must have stopped the strings from invading so the culprits probably. Forcing her to live a never-ending nightmare until she can no longer resist. Trying to break her down, huh? That's downright dirty. So this cocoon is meant to imprison her within her nightmares. Then we should destroy it and save her. Yeah, let's wake her up together. Wait, both of you. <sighs> oh, Ishlar. What? Who are you? Ishlar. It's Bix's sister, Asliar's younger brother. What? He's also been possessed by Azuril, an entity born from those memory thread strings. Ishlar, you don't recognize me any longer? It's no use now, Asdir. He's been completely taken over by the Zuril. Ishlar, come back, Ishlar. <sighs> so if Anisha gets taken over completely, that's what will become of her too? Looks like he's been left here as a guard. So he's supposed to keep a lookout until Anisha's heart is broken. That's awful. Damn it. Please, somebody. Gian, anybody help. Anisha! Ishlar, have I failed to save you again? Asliar, you can't give up. We'll do all we can to help you save Ishlar from his nightmare. You're right. I'm his older sister. I can't give up hope of rescuing him. Rax and Aidy. If you do help me for just a little while longer, I know I can do this. Of course we will. We'll cut down all those night those nightmare strings and rescue both Ishlar and Anisha. What? The strings unraveling from the cocoon are turning into zeros. Anisha's strength is weakening. At this rate, she will be swallowed up by the shadows before long. Damn! Don't you dare give up, Gian. Anisha hasn't lost yet. She's fighting all by herself, even though the shadows are nearly overwhelming her. This is the time to redouble our efforts, not throw in the towel. <sighs> I don't need you telling me that. There's no way I'm giving up on her. Zero chance. I'd give my life to save Anisha if it came to that. <laughs> Ray's right. We just need to work together because we can defeat those weird strings, I know it. If we reach out to Anisha with our feelings, that can help too. It will reinforce her heart, making it strong enough to break the, co the curse of the cocoon. I know how strong Lady Anisha truly is. She can beat this with our... with our help. Pluck up your courage and stretch out your hand. We'll save you, Anisha. Just don't give up hope. <laughs> no, that was kind of hype. Had me smiling a little bit. We can do this. We gotta defeat Feller Ishlar. Mother, mother, please don't leave him behind. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that. Put yourself together, Anisha. I know you're strong enough to survive this. We're gonna pull you out of that thing. 
before you know it, so just hold on a little longer. All those earls around here were created by that one girl. It seems so. And that magical sword-wielding guy was already more than enough for us to deal with. Well, it's too bad we couldn't pick our battle. This is the one we were given, and we have to fight to save her. Let's do it. Nightmare groans. Mother, everyone, I hate all of you. I love it. Disappear, disappear. What the? The zeros that were defeated are being regenerated by the girl. I'm going out on a metaphysical limb and say... Those enemies are born from the darkness in our heart. Oh, hell no. That would mean there's not going to be an end to this. Damn it. Anisha, please, come back to me. I still need you. I still want to see you. I care about you. You're not alone. That's right. Yes, you aren't alone. You still have Gian and all of us. I know just how strong you actually are, Princess. So please, do not let that voice be smothered by the darkness that yearns to overtake you. Pluck up that courage and stretch out your hands for help. It's not hard. We're right here. We're going to find a way to save you. So don't give up on us before we succeed. Here we go. Alright, Spear Slake. We're running on the clock here. Did I just use that on myself? I am stupid. <laughs> Why did I do that? Fierce like. Ooh. I can just bypass them. I'll take that. Done.
because she's got the linker class and she's got a lawler. I like her magic attack being high though, so I'm not gonna make her that. So we're good. I thought this was the end, that I would just disappear, unable to do anything. Anisha! Because that's just how weak I am. Lady Anisha. Always being protected by someone. Anisha! But Gian's voice, all of your voices, are telling me that's not the case. <laughs> Anisha! I want to change from being the weak person I am. No, I don't want to change. I will change. Nice. <laughs> Anisha, she's pretty. Anisha, what a beautiful light! This is her Erose power. I can see why it's so prized. Uh -huh. I want to change too, sis. Aslier. Ishlar. <laughs> Come on, he's still in there. Fight it, Ishlar. Look, the Zerl is leaving Ishlar's body. He can't take Ishlar prisoner while being exposed to Anisha's light. You're not getting take away. Take it down. I will sever the chain of nightmares with my sword of justice. Nice. We did it. We saved both of them. You're safe now, Ishlar. Why'd you even bother? I let myself be controlled by the enemy. You should have just killed me. Don't be stupid. Have you any idea how worried we all were about you? Living in a terrible world like this, there are many worries. But good things happen too. We've met so many good friends, remember? And besides, I... Sis? I'm so glad. I'm just grateful to have reconnected with you. Welcome back, Ishla. <laughs> I... I'm happy to be back. And I'm happy for you, Aslir. Gian! We finally meet again! Anisha, I'm reassured to see that you're safe. I'll make a place where you can rest and recharge yourselves until you are stronger. You really put up a great fight in there, Anisha. Yeah, impressive stuff for sure. You surprised me. Uh, and you two would be? Two mouth-breathing idiots who should know that Anisha here hasn't met us yet. Ah. Uh. The trap of the alternate timeline. Oh, uh, <laughs> right. We're sorry for confusing you. Actually, we're. I know. Huh? Her eyes are pretty AF. They're super big and pink. <laughs> it may be my first time seeing you. But I know that you've been trying desperately to save me. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we got to know the true horror of Nether via Erst, encountered Zerl controlled Ishlar, and met Anisha, who had been trapped in a nightmarish cocoon of strings, one after the other. Weird thing is, I kept feeling like I sensed the movements of an evil malice. But the strength of Anisha's feelings became something like a light of purification. <sighs> Alright. Hayato's our last companion left to rescue. 
I'm sure Demon Lord Hayato is formidable, but I have faith that we can beat him. Then, together, we're all clear to face the real enemy. The Puppet Master pulling those strings. Whoever it might be that's doing this to us. <sighs> Oh, look, I can sit with Earths now. Huh. Oh, Anisha. Skerl, Atosh, Benosa, Kanan, uh, Rueli, Arca, Fulth, Ceylon, Wisher, Fair, Ray, Kyle, Ishlar, or Esli, or, or Aedy, Rex, Armor, Nesty, Taurus, Magna, Natsumi, or Ist. We don't do Ist again. I want to get, I want to make them best friends. question out of the blue. What happened this time? I made an effort to communicate with the others as you suggested before. Yet, for some reason, everyone seems to get angry with me in the middle of the conversation. According to them, my words are sharp and show a lack of consideration. Oh, I can totally see that. You are a little, uh, straightforward for some people. I merely speak what is on my mind. What is wrong with that? Um... Tact is something learned over time. Consideration comes naturally if you care about someone. Consideration comes naturally if you care about someone. Is the relationship between those two things really so clear-cut? It comes naturally if you put yourself in the other person's shoes and think about how you would react to your own words. That is highly inefficient and would take far too much time. I would have to analyze the other person's behavior principles and psychological state. Regardless, you need to learn to do it, so it becomes second nature. Choosing the words to use is an action that will help you know the other person better. Having consideration means knowing the other person and expressing your desire to treat them well. If you can express it properly, you'll have fewer problems with people getting angry with you. So, you're saying I have to know the other person better and develop an attachment to them? That's not exactly it, but you're on the right track. So, a continual series of trial and error efforts will help one get to know the other person better. I suppose I was being too impatient and need to put more time into this. Thank you, Raj. If Is tries to get to know everyone a little better, I'm sure he'll eventually start to get along better with them. See, I'd normally be going for, like, the hot girls that I like on those types of scenes. But I feel like I need to master out the, the, the residents of Fallujah. I don't know if it will help at all toward, like, a true ending. But I don't know. Truth to be mocked. Ludicrous patchy world. Chapter 21. I mean, it's worth a shot, you know?
<laughs> That's that sounds it's like that seems so forced. He's like, I know I should be grateful. Thanks. <laughs> That's how I imagine he said it, because it sounded so forced. <clears throat> oh boy. Her eyes are so beautiful. <laughs> I love the giant pink eyeball things. Her irises.
We were summoned to be his food, basically. Which could kind of mesh in line with um, the Demon Lord, for the most part. It knows who it is. I can like it, it easily. It knows who it is, and he's like, "Yeah, like this is not gonna go well." Once we find out, Dang. Real identity of the spider's nest. Raj, are we really heading for the enemy's base? Of course! This is the enemy who did all those bad things to Anisha and Ishlar. We can't just stand by and watch more of our friends be hurt or worse. But I'm not sure if this plan will succeed. It seems like we're just going with the flow without a good plan. There are indeed risks. And if this is really the enemy's base, then we'll meet opponents stronger than Ishlar from before. <sighs> but... I know you want to say we should still go anyway, right? Yeah. I get... Wanting to find out more first, but we can't keep preparing and never acting. That's right, who knows if all this dilly dallying is going to make us too late for something big. But we're going to face the world itself. Aren't, aren't we? And you okay with that, Raj? This isn't about what I'm okay with. I've already decided to help everyone get back, so that means I have to keep moving towards that goal. We may indeed fulfill that objective by invading the spider's nest that Ishlar spoke of, but... Well, the price for that action may be high. You're all overthinking this. This is a discussion to be had after we actually win. Gear up and give this your best shot. We're definitely going to win. Oh, Raj. Melgatos again. I honestly thought I'd sealed off my presence completely. Green Melgitos? <laughs> Look at the lot of you. A ragtag traveling troop. Melgitos! What the hell are you playing in our sandbox for? Clever. How many nights did you lie awake to think of that ineffective taunt? <laughs> we 
don't have Probably a lot, for this honestly. Back and forth. Useless? Don't jump to conclusions. You don't know how long I've been waiting here to give you a piece of friendly advice. Friendly advice? Yes. Go back. What? Why? None of you understand anything about what this world was created for. Why all of you were summoned here. And the terror that awaits you at your intended destination. All of which we're trying to figure out. The best way we know how. You'll die. You're lying. There are some taboos in the world, powerful enough to bring destruction by a mere touch. What lies just ahead is one of those. If someone ignorant should attempt to get involved, then death will be their only outcome. Which, believe it or not, I find extremely unamusing. Especially after I finally met the descendants of the extinct Klezmet clan here once again. You don't mean... That's exactly what happened in my world. Making every day incredibly mundane. The Klesmet, the Lame, and even the soul fragment of that hateful angel Almide. They've all been destroyed. But how do I continue playing the game like that? It's infuriating. Don't tell me. You came to this world because... Yes, that's right. I wanted to see all of you so much. I allowed so in his world, everyone who was his enemy basically is dead and he he likes to he's he likes to play around with them so much that he get, let himself get caught for i had faith that all of you would definitely be among those being gathered from the different timelines okay now we're veering into outright obsession and that's just <laughs> weird and unexpected what if they weren't here what were you gonna do then huh if that happened it wouldn't matter what i did anyway Toying around with a world without all of you would just be tedious and boring. It seems like he's actually serious. Talk about a strange kind of diabolical affection. However, after being here for a while, I've changed my point of view. I got to know that the world is vast, and there are lots of other playmates I can torment for fun. Are you beginning to understand? I have yet to squeeze all the fun I can out of you all. Letting you die in a stupid way would put an end to my delightful game here. Therefore, while I know I'm being tedious and annoying, I'm trying to save you from yourself here. Given that you're a known liar, there must be another motive for your warning. I agree. The only way to get some approximation of the truth is to feed it out of him. And good. Huh. It does hurt that none of you recognize my benevolence when I try it out. It's clear you challenged us knowing full well we would be. Oh. Showing your face anyway means you've already foreseen the possibility of a direct confrontation. In other words, you're only doing this to lead us, little by little, to that game you so cherish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo! You still can surprise me. So then, let's start playing the next round of this lovely game at once. No one cares about what you want, sleaze bag. And don't think we're not going to take you out if you stand in our way. Oh, yes. Good. Very good. Please get angrier. The taste of that negativity is so sublime. I'm thinking there's no choice but to take the weirdo out. Get ready for battle. Weapons down. That sounds like Tuya, but... Fighting Melgitos here would be a pointless waste of effort. You should turn back. What? Why? But we need to go over there, and he's blocking the way. Just calm down and listen to what Tuya has to say first. But we've finally been able to locate the enemy. Now is the time to move in and take the enemy out, before anyone else gets hurt. So please, let us pass. 
I'm sorry, but this time, I have to agree with Melgitos. I can't let you proceed past this point. Kazaki, what's wrong with you? He's serious about stopping you from advancing. I don't want to bring the room down, but what happens if we say tough and press on anyway? In that case... No! Stop, Fukizaki! I don't want to hear it! Natsumi! You must hear it, because in that case I will be doing everything in my power... Why? Ugh, what is happening here? A linker is... Why? Why? Oh, this game gets more delicious by the moment! A linker joining forces with me! It's almost too fantastic to bear! This is why I can't get enough of you flawed humans! <laughs> I am not united with you for any other reason but circumstance. Remember that. You have your reasons, and we have ours. We're moving ahead, regardless of the cost. Maybe you'll spill your reasons between sniffles after we take you down a notch. That does sound like an attractive way to cut down on future troubles. I'm ready. Let's take him down. I'm sorry it had to come to this. Damn it, here we go. Stupid Toya. They were calling him Toya. I don't like that. It's Toya. Defeat Melgitos, Melgitos and Toya. Why? Why can't he let us go further? I'm so confused at what's happening. Here I go. Oh, you know what I wanted to check? Yeah, if we have Erst in the party. We do not. Okay. I wanted to make sure to see if he joined us yet or not. But I guess not. That was ticklish. It tickled my my funny bone. Like two. I'm coming for you. We. We. Rock rush. 
We Rock Rush. Dunzo. Good enough for now. Alright. Alright. That's a wrap. It's my turn. Your turn. Here it goes. Woo. That was a workout. Here he comes. Here I go. Yeah. Your turn. I need to rest a little. Showtime. Spear slag. Take that. Uh, all right. Here we go. Good enough for now. Take that. It's one down. Bye bye. All right. Here it goes. I'll be ready right. to go again soon. And that's a wrap. Let's begin. That's all I can do right now. I'm gonna make this count. Okay. You're dead. And I need to rest a little. Let's begin. Here I go. Okay. Here we go. You're dead. Match over. Yep, that's about Yeah. Right. About right. We win. Today you were victorious, and so I graciously accept defeat at our at your hands. What the? Are you for real? I mean, what kind of a bad guy says that? Uh, but I've said this was a game, and so I must abide by its rules. Flay me, fry me, do as your tiny hearts desire. You are the victors. Listen, you and I both know you wouldn't even be edible when fried. Your opinion only until your opinion until proven. Well, I've had my fun, so... Had your fun? So even this loss is part of the game? Your playtime, huh? Somehow, none of this surprises me. Classic Magitos misdirection. But I really didn't think we'd end up fighting Toya. And I hope this will be the last time. Fukazaki, are you alright? Yes, thanks. I'm fine. Don't move. I'll heal those wounds. Oh, wings of light, heal the wounds of the combatant. Thanks for doing this. I mean, I was trying to fight you before, and... It's obvious you had your reasons. Something you felt was important enough to fight for. Malgitos, Toya, you're gonna let us pass now, right? No, I can't do that. No one asks what the loser in battle thinks, so be quiet. Yeah, don't make this all weird by being a sore loser. 
So is the reason you're not letting us go ahead the same as that of Melgitos? That we'll definitely be killed if we naively dive in there, head first with our limited knowledge? Being killed is one thing. The core issue is that I fear you will be completely erased. What? The enemy can directly tamper with your very memories themselves using those strings. The moment they sense clear animosity, they'll probably tear your memories into pieces. That's a dreadful vision of our future, but it is strange in one way. We would not cease to exist just because someone tampers with our memories, correct? Yes, that's true. Because... Since you're struggling to explain it to these mental midgets, I can do it for you. What? You're getting all tongue-tied and conf confusifying at the most important part. As cruel as the truth may seem, you'll accomplish nothing by withholding what they need to know. Stop it. Don't you dare, Melgitos. No, tell us everything, Melgitos. Soul. I know you have your reasons, and I know you're hiding whatever it is from us for our own good. But you can't leave us in the dark on this. It's too important. You're frustrating me because we're supposed to be friends, right? Oh, Casus, don't cry. I will acknowledge that we are perhaps truly ignorant. However, we are not afraid to know the truth. We're ready to cope with anything you can throw at us. I want to know too. Rezzy, I'm really scared, but I do want to know. I get the feeling I have to know this. I think we're all in the same boat on this, Rezzy. But with that attitude, I've got a new level of respect for you. <laughs> Rezzy plucked up his courage. Perrier will do the same. You've done enough, Toya. There's no need for you and Aya to keep bearing this load by yourselves. So please. All right. Okay, Melgitos. Spill it. Everything related to Fallujah, you have... You have come to know. If that is what the victor wishes, that is what the victor shall have, and more. Now then, perhaps we should start with the origin of this world. On arriving here, you should have all fought quite a few shadowy in entities. You mean the Zerls? As you already know, those are entities woven from magical strings, using memory residue as their core. With a bit of ingenuity and some memories to serve as core, even I can create these shadow creatures. Yes, but how does that relate to this world itself? The basic structure is the same. Everything existing on this world is similarly made of memories and magical strings, all of it. What? By projecting memories onto a bundle of magical strings, they take on what appears to be a material form. Something like a paper mache puppet. Yesterday's news becomes tomorrow's entertainment. Wait, doesn't that mean that we're all... Papier mache. You and I and everyone here. We're all nothing more than puppets in a grand spectacle. But that can't be. I feel like me. Yep, I knew it. I knew it. I thought this whole thing was some kind of sham. This place kind of reminds me of the the world where the Biakuya people live. What was that, Lucia? Oh, uh, <laughs> nothing. Just talking to myself. If we accept this fantastical premise, Melgitos has presented... A lot of things start to make a lot of sense. We can't use normal summon arts because we can't summon actual material bodies, right? And summonite leaf, summonite, summon arts isn't really actual summoning, per se. We're just making summon zeros using the engraved memories as a core, right? Exactly. Everything that falls from the sky is bound by the same rules. If anything falls without a complete form, that's because it wasn't able to adjust itself to this world properly. So us not being able to use our powers fully was also because of a failure to adjust to this world's rules. But you've done far better than most. Most cannot even muster the power to battle once arriving here. Which is why as one as one to have managed to retain a large portion of their original power... I would say that you definitely live up to the reputation as brave ones of Linbaum. Somehow that praise rings hollow coming from you. I believe I understand the logic now, but some aspects of this still don't fit. Oh? If our current bodies have been woven by magical strings, where did the memory core come from? Yeah, where? Each of us clearly still has a will of our own. Some too much, in fact. This is quite different from the Zerls. And so there should be a clear line that differentiates us from them. 
Maybe if Melgitos tells us how exactly our memories were brought into this world, it would clear that up. <laughs> Are any or all of you familiar with the phrase, World Boundary Lines Crips? Sounds like crisps. That's not some kind of food factory, is it? Ray, you always have some kind of food angle. Of course it doesn't have to do with food, but now I'm hungry. Can the two of you please have a stronger sense of urgency about this? Linbaum and the four other worlds were separated. Born from a single existence. The primordial Elgo. The higher sentient being who has unparalleled power. Right? The very one. And of course the son of the Estoeric Servolt family would know about this, hmm? Just helping your story. The mockery is not necessary. Continue. Despising solitude and seeking an existence to interact with, this singular primordial algal split up and created the worlds you know. Machine world Lorelau, Yokai world Siltern, Spirit world Saparith, and Beast world Mitropa. And Linbaum, the Utopia of Souls. Five worlds established with a cycle of rebirth, promoting the circulation and advancement of souls. Each world was to develop individually, under the oversight of their own will, of the world of Elgo. But all exist unendingly, yet remain linked to the original primordial Elgo. This link refers to crypts, magical strings attached to all creation born from the primordial Elgo. There are magical lines providing an interchange of information and con connecting every soul to the Elgo. That is a total and complete fantasy. None of the teachings of the f faction talk about this. Yeah? Well, two words. Machine ruins. Remember those? Another unspoken taboo subject, right? Go. Cool. Melgitos isn't wrong on at least one point I can vouch for. What are you referring to, Lord Rex? The source of power from our magical swords is the magic flowing from those crypts. Really? You were using it without knowing? Wait, uh, you'll only find out about that in the near future. When did you find out, Ishlar? From the Zerl's memories. It showed me one nightmare after another when I was under the, its control. That's terrible. Since Teach says it's true, Melkitos' story can't be a complete fabrication. As if there was ever any doubt, I'm in, I'm on quite good terms with the truth. When that truth benefits you, and only then. The man has a point. Hard to deny that. So it's something like an umbilical cord that connects a child to their mother. This one is quite astute with the visualizations. Yes, let us call it the umbilical cord of the soul, then. We're not usually cognizant of it, but... All of us are linked to the world via Crip. And that doesn't change, even if we've been summoned to another world. Sorry, guys. And that's right, because to sever that connection means the target will cease to even exist. You just said it's a magical string, right? Does that mean I see where you're going? And no, unfortunately, it is a different kind of magical string from the ones here. When you were paying attention earlier, you heard me say those are simply materials for memory projection. And also the outlet for all those memories. So Crypts is acting as a core that gives us a kind of physical form in this world. Correct. We were not summoned into this world, we were torn away from our former worlds. From different timelines and pulled in here along with our Crypts. <laughs> Absolutely ludicrous, no? In this haphazardly cobbled together patchwork world. Everything turns out to be borrowed pa papier-mâché. There's nothing of substance here at all. Wait a minute. Did you just say that even if we were summoned into other worlds, our crypts do not change? And that severing that connection means we will cease to exist altogether? Yes, I did say that, which is why the strings forming this world, Fallujah, are being used as a device to prevent that from happening. What? Strings woven together with a crypt's core act as a, co a cocoon that prevents the subject from crumbling away. It is of course limited in what it can do. 
Then what, when Big Bro and Nasty lost their memories before and started acting strange. The memories being safeguarded had been leaking out, which was why I used the strings to stem the leak. Ist, you know about this? Why didn't you say anything? No one asked. Who in the world would notice something like that without being told? Raj, stop, calm down. Ugh. Even if he did explain, I have a feeling we wouldn't have believed it. Don't you agree? Okay, is spill it now. What, what are we? If everything in this world was cobbled together with things stolen from other worlds, and there's nothing real at all, then what about us? People who have, who have existed in this world from the very beginning. What are we? Yeah, I don't have any memories of being pulled from another world. I've always been in this world with Patch. I've lived here, grown up here, and it's the same for you as well, right, Amu? I... Do you not already have the answer? What? Like Linker I have said, you are entities that should not have existed originally. You received life in this world in an unwanted manner, which makes the both of you irregulars. We're... irregulars? Yes, born in a fortuitous event from the intermingling of multiple memory drags that fell into this world. That's not true. It can't be. Unlike the Zerls, we have our own will. How many times do I have to tell you? That is why you're entities that shouldn't have existed originally. Uh, I don't know the cause, and that overseer over there probably is without the answer as well. Is that true, Ist? Yes, that's right. I have no answer to the why of your birth here. The only thing I can say is that it was a miraculous convergence of, e of events. That's just... A miracle, but miracles can be cruel as often as they are kind. You just rarely speak of the cruel ones. You're not helping, demon. I don't appreciate the cavalier way you're messing with my head, damn it. Raj. Melgitos is talking out of his evil ass. However, it does all make some kind of sense. Har. Hey, whose side are you on anyway? But also, you need to calm down. It looks like you... Look... Look, like it or not, I'm telling the absolute truth here. I'll take over from here. Toya, are you sure? You promised Aya. Yes, I'm going to have to break that promise, but keeping it from them will result in more harm. I agree. I think we have to accept it as inevitable. So you all knew all along, but have been keeping have been keeping it from us. If you must blame someone, blame Aya and myself. We had a rough idea of what was going on, but deliberately refrained from saying anything. Whatever we've told Toya, Kerr, and Sol are just bits and pieces of the whole thing. I was getting the idea that was the case. I'm sorry. Why? To avoid causing an uproar and... Because we don't know for sure where the enemy is, or how much they know. Kerr. I heard Chloré was left behind to monitor the situation for the same reason as well. Raj, Amu, we know that you mean no harm to us, but... We couldn't rule out the possibility that it was a carefully manipulated facade. How can you say that right to them? That's really mean. It was the only thing we could do to keep what we knew a secret. There was no guarantee that we wouldn't be dealt with as enemies the moment we showed signs of resistance. Tampering with memories is an attack on our crypts. That's what you meant when you said we could be erased just now, wasn't it? Until we can be clear who the enemy really is, the last thing we should be doing is launching an offensive. And after understanding what was in play, we agreed with it, and that makes us accomplices. Toya. Don't worry. It's not like we're trying to look for criminals here. Everyone understands that the situation is beyond anything we've experienced before. But that's also why we need you to tell us everything you've been hiding. If we shouldered this burden together as a group, it will be lighter for all of us. All right. Melgitos really is telling the truth. The world of Fallujah was woven together by all sorts of building blocks that were pulled from Linbaum together with the crypts from past and present timelines. A patchwork world, essentially. But why would anyone do that? For feeding. I knew it. We weren't the only ones who've had to face this situation. The enemy has from a long, long time ago been chipping away at Linbaum's crypts, feeding on them. To remain undetected, they've been doing it quite subtly, subtly all this time, even straddling multiple timelines. 
I had no idea. Of course not. The enemy has been able to deceive even the algo itself. If that is indeed the truth, then we're talking about an enemy that is in existence equal to algo. It seems to be the case. An existence that can freely manipulate magical strings and create an entire world. One that invades and toys with a person's heart by plaguing them with nightmares using puppet strings. An existence that transcends time to interfere with crypts while feeding on Lindbaum. But who the hell is this enemy? Perhaps you should ask him yourself rather than asking me. Huh? You know more about this than me, right, Ist? Ist, as the overseer of this world, you must be deeply involved with the creator of it some, may, some way. By right, you should actually be an enemy of ours, isn't that so? Ist, what do you have to say for yourself? You're right. What? Dang. So Ist is somewhat involved with whoever the main villain is. Chapter 22, the line between reason and savagery, creative destruction. This doesn't make any sense. Ist is our enemy? Be that as it may, it is the truth, Raj. Then Ist, tell us who you really are. Fine. I am the overseer of Fallujah, an offspring of the creator. Aberrant body... Il de Lucia, released into a feeding ground, meant to cultivate me as its successor. I believe my auditory circuit glitched. Did you just say feeding ground? Perry and friends are food, then? It was bad enough the first time. You didn't need to repeat it. Il de Lucia. At least we know who we're dealing with now. The enemy that brought us here. The one we should be fighting. But who is Il de Lucia, exactly? What else can you tell us? I don't know the details. You could say it is an existence that surpasses the realm of common comprehension. You call yourself its alter ego, and yet you don't know? I understand what it is instinctively, but there are not words sufficient to describe it. However, from your conversation just now, I now know a few things. Good enough. Tell us, Ist. Very well. The world of Lindbaum that you were all from was created by Elgo. That was what you said, right? Yes, that's right. Then El Delusia is, at the very least, an existence that is equal to or above that. After all, it created everything existing in Fluja, including myself. An existence equal to Algo, huh? Talk about us against the world, literally. That is most probably the conflict you are facing, however. It would appear there is a crucial difference between El Delusia and Algo. Which is... Their attitude towards the worlds they have created. Algo protects the world that have s the worlds that have sprung up from it. But for what purpose? What Malgito said just now. In order to produce an existence equal to Algo itself, capable of interacting with it, Algo created the world's life and watches over the advancement of the souls within. That is precisely the fundamental difference. Eldelusha has no such lofty goal in mind. Then why did it create this world? You wish me to say it again? To consume it. What? By carving the building blocks of other worlds, it also steals the mana that accompanies these elements. However, it cannot simply eat them like that, because their connection to their former world is too strong. That's why it allows them to roam freely in Fallujah until they settle here. Their memories eventually fade and the connection is broken. Exactly how Nesty forgot about Taurus. So this world is like a live bait cage, then. Where captured prey are put away for future use. Ghoulish, I'm sure, but precisely right. At the very least, Il Delusia... Illid... Lid... Lid... Delusia has no intention of developing this world at all. Once it outlives its purpose, it will swallow up this world whole and create another. Simple as that. Ah, oh, that's terrible. What the hell, man? That's terrible. So we're all just waiting to be gobbled up, then? Just a minute. If that's the case, wouldn't Ist's supplementing of Kyle and Nesty's memories back then 
be contrary to El Delusia's will for us, to, uh, at, for us as prey? Wait, that's a good point. Just that one event disqualifies Ista as our enemy, I think. But I won't deny that there's a bit more of my personal bias in that evaluation. Both. What do you say to that, Is? I am the offspring of El Delusia. I was given this world and made its overseer in order to gain the food to allow me to grow. So this place isn't a feeding ground prepared for Ildelusha itself, but for you, right? Yes, but it did not matter to me. But? Truly, it didn't matter at all. Perhaps because I was created as Ildelusha's successor, or that I had been given Felusia, or that I had to grow by feeding on the bait that was captured and thrown into this world. All of it felt so hollow to me. What if I did comply with this great unproductive squandering of resources? What lies ahead of that? Nothing except the continuation of a godlike, voracious monster that devours worlds on a whim. Ist, that is not the fate I would wish for myself. I will not become part of that. I would rather find joy in watching how these countless lives falling into this world strive to live against all odds. The countlessly brilliant lives full of animated feelings, so unlike the washed-out shadow of a person I am. Is that the reason why you took us in and helped us? I did it on a whim. A way to kill time, if you will. With the end approaching, the world is destined to be consumed in the very near future, after all. What do you mean by that? I'm saying your Delusia has gotten fed up with the, pe the petulant child who refuses to stand on his own two feet. In its frustration, it intends to swallow the world whole along with me. After that, it will recreate this world again and start over. That's messed up. It can't be helped, because that's all it, it recognizes. In all likelihood, Ildelusha hunted all of you powerful ones and brought you here, as an ultimatum to me. To try to force you into the mold it, it fashioned for you? Most likely. I bet it likes Pete, too. But your actions show you rejected that as well. Toya, is this... I know, Raj. He may be the enemy's successor, but he's not someone who is against us. Then... I promise you, I won't attack him without provocation of some kind. That seems unwise. Are you really sure about that? Malgitos, I have to admit that regardless of what we now know, I want to trust them. And that is enough for me. Yeah. It is your mistake to make. Do you believe me? Yes. But I also have something to ask. Having re resigned yourself to certain destruction, why did you get yourself involved with us? If nothing mattered to you, as you said, then why did you give them a helping hand? In the course of time, it did start mattering to me after all. Somewhere inside me, I began to develop a strong attachment. Raj, Amu, I'm talking about the both of you. Eh? Many humans were called here, then they passed from time. Both of you were born spontaneously from the accumulation of their memory shards. So that's what happened. That means we were born in this world after all. We're not Zeros. We were living here, and we had our own will. I'm sure you're both relieved to hear that. In fact, the two of you were the first life to be born in this very world itself. It was something highly intriguing to me, and I sensed the value in your existence. And that is why I wanted to watch them develop with my very eyes. Is that why you... Yes. I segregated them using the string precipice to safeguard and observe them. I dispatched the newly created linen and its alter egos to them, too. To serve as an access terminal. Wait, so Patch and Crope were from you, Est? Yes. I didn't want to risk arousing Ildelusha's attention by contacting you directly. I deliberately chose to observe both of you from afar to prevent any forced tampering. It was just something I did to satisfy my own curiosity, so you don't have to thank me for anything. But it was because of you. It is, it is because of what you did that we were able to survive all this time. So let us thank you, alright? Ist, you deserve it. Do as you will, as long as it is of your own volition. Nyang nyang. But then we showed up. And it changed everything, huh? Yes. By coming into contact with you, this world that had been in stasis started tr to transform. <sighs> Entities with their own sense of self, a very arrival here, started exerting an influence on this world, right? 
Yes, and the most interesting part is only now beginning to show. Interesting. But that's what I may have felt. After all, I chose not to stop them. I see. Since you're the overseer of this world, you could have stopped them if you wanted to. But I did not choose to. Meeting other people for the first time since, since my inception. I saw for myself your way of life. How you made choices after much thought and effort. You were all unintended variances. But I thought it amusing to simply go along and see what happened. And now we have arrived at this junction today. So you were watching over all of us all this time. Thanks, Ist. I haven't done anything deserving of thanks. As I mentioned, this world is destined to be consumed whole and soon. It may be cruel in a sense, but I've done everything I could already. Don't say that. Thanks to you, we were able to discover what it was like to have friends. Yeah, and it's not like we're going to just let it all end like this without a fight. You don't mean you intend to. Yup, I haven't given up yet. I will not submit to this cruel fate without putting up a fight. You intend to rise up against the creator of this world. Our birth was a miracle, wasn't it? It's not like Il Il Ildelusha created us. If anything, I'd say Issa's is more like our parent, since you've been watching over us this whole time. I'm your... I see. Let me ask you again, Ist. What do you wish to do now? My wish is to see how Raj and Amu will turn out on the path they have chosen. Even though I can no longer stay a bystander after closely associating myself with them. That feeling of mine has not changed. To see how they turn out, huh? Believe it or not, I completely get that. I have shown you the entirety of my true self now. I apologize for keeping this from all of you. Yep, we can trust him. I'm sure of it now. But I want to trust him. Anisha. Yes, I believe we can trust our friend Is. After all I withheld until now, you would still call me a friend. But you can't tell by looking at everyone's reactions? That's right, isn't it, Fulf? Nothing will change the fact that you saved our lives. You will always have our gratitude for that. Thank you. Dang. <laughs> I'm so glad Is told us the truth. Okay, back to the meeting base.